Welcome to Greenshine Farmer's video blog about a family starting a farm and going back to the homestead lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome to Greenshine Farmers. Today we're going to be going over our drip irrigation system. We're going to show you how to install one, some considerations, um, you know, advantages and disadvantages versus overhead irrigation. And we're just going to give you a complete rundown of our system along with the fertigation that we do um, to show you kind of how to set up one yourself. So, hope you guys enjoy. All right, now first we should discuss what is drip irrigation. Well, there's really two types of, of irrigation. You can do overhead, which is just going to be sprinklers, you know, throwing a bunch of water everywhere, or you could do drip, which is going to look kind of like this. So you can see we've got our, um, our sub main here, which is just one and a half inch oval hose. Um, it's got these little valve connectors that we can, you know, we can close them off or we can open them up. And then it's got these uh, drip lines. Basically it's just a 5 8 uh, diameter plastic and you can see it has a little slit right there where the water comes out of. Now you always want to install with the slit up so the water kind of falls like that. It helps uh, to prevent clogging and just getting you know debris in there and you can see we've got three lines on this bed. We've got our um, our sub main here which is just one and a half inch oval hose. Um, it's got these little valve connectors that we can you know we can close them off, or we can open them up, and then it's got these uh, drip lines. Basically, it's just a 5 8 uh, diameter plastic, and you can see it has a little slit right there where the water comes out of. Now, you always want to install with the slit up so the water kind of falls like that. It helps uh, to prevent clogging and just getting, you know, debris in there. And All right, so here's our setup here. Now, the way this works is the water basically comes from that pump house over there uh, where the well is. Uh, we've got a, a two inch PVC line that's buried, comes over here and comes up right here. We've got an air vent on top to relieve some of the pressure. We've got a, uh, a valve down here where we've got, you know, kind of splits off into hoses. This one runs to our pack shed. This one runs to plot B and this one is for plot A. Um, Come over here, we've got backflow prevention, which is very important. We've actually got double backflow prevention. And then we have this Mazzy injector. Now, the way this Mazzy injector works, it basically works on a pressure differential. So it has this hose. So you'll fill up your five gallon bucket with your nutrient solution or your compost tea. You drop this little hose, it's got like a uh, you know a mesh filter on the end there. And then you use this valve to adjust the pressure. This allows us to put nutrients into our drip line. We go here, we've got our um, 130 mesh uh, disc filter, which is important for separating out any uh, sediment that might come through the drip lines. And then we've got another air vent up here before it runs underground and then comes back up over here. This is our timer. So basically what you will do to start it up, you just hit that on button and I don't know if you guys see that, but push the water button. And then you have four different uh, options, or four different, uh, I guess, valves to choose from. We only have two set up, because we only need two. But you just hit the center button, hear that click on, and there goes the water. So, and then you can just set your time, you know, however you want. So if you wanted to do it for 10 minutes or five minutes or whatever. I usually do it from anywhere between, I'd say an hour and a half to two hours, depending on, how hot it is, how dry it is, what I think our plants need. So you can see we have um, this one here uh, goes to plot A. So after the timer, it branches off into this oval hose and then the oval hose just runs the length of our field. And then we basically just have these little valves here punched in and, and we run our drip lines down. Now when we clear a bed like here, all we do is we just take these up and we move them over to the side. Super easy to move out of the way so that we can uh, turn beds. Um, over here we've got another valve and so this would be valve four. It runs to plot B and we've just got this blue lay flat hose that just runs down that pathway over to our plot B to where it connects to the oval hose over there. Okay, here we are in plot B and I just wanted to show how this oval hose connects. 
Um, so here's our lay flat hose coming from the timer and it comes down here. It's a little bit weedy, but hopefully you guys can see. We have, and this is very important, we have a pressure regulator. And this is going to make sure that the PSI does not exceed what the uh, drip lines can handle. The arrow means water comes this way. Comes down here to just a, basically just a PVC T, and it tees off here, and we have just some uh, worm gear clamps, and this is like a barbed fitting here. And you know, I'll give you some, uh, I'll, I'll put in the show notes of links for who we used for our drip irrigation, and they're uh, they're really good. They, they they're super knowledgeable, and they can help you set up your system. But yeah, you can see it just tees off, comes up here. We've got a little air vent at the top here again to just help relieve pressure. You don't want any. Um, they call them air hammers, and they can help blow your they can blow your lines out if you're not careful. So you want to make sure everything's vented. These things are like 12 bucks, so it's almost just kind of. Um, even if it's not necessary, it's it's probably just a good idea to have, and um, and then yeah, just all of our drip lines are plugged into this oval hose. I already have two laid out for this bed, but I'd like to do a third. So I'm just going to put it right in the middle here. This is called a barb punch. I believe it's a uh, 400 barb punch. You're going to want to match your barb punch to the the barbed fitting that you're going to be using. So. Uh, like I said, I believe this is 400 barb. Um, your irrigation people can, can help you figure that out. But um, these are just 5 eighths fittings. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to very gently kind of just wiggle that in there. You don't want to go through to the other side. Just like that, right? Gives you a little punch. You take your fitting, squeeze it in there, and then you just tighten it like this. And the cool thing about these fittings is you have the ability to close them off. So if that bed is not in production or if say a bed is getting too much water, um, you have the ability to just close this off. You know, so your drip tape is going to come in a roll of anywhere from 10,000 feet or so, uh, typically how they sell them. And so what I've done is I've just taken a piece of rebar, stake it through, grab your drip tape, like that, you want the white line up, and you're just gonna pull. And now we can just walk down, pull our drip tape, the length of the bed. All right, once you've got your drip tape, just gonna take it like that, make sure this is all the way back, slide it on. Make sure it's all the way in there, like that, and then you just tighten this thing. And that's gonna tighten around this and then give it a good pull to make sure it doesn't pull out. There's nothing worse than turning on your water and poof, your drip lines blow out. But um, yeah, that's that. Now um, we're ready to go uh, fix up the end. Once you've got your drip line laid out, you pull it tight. And you're just going to want to cut a little bit more because we're going to end up folding it over. So I just give a little bit extra slack here. I'm going to cut it right here. And then all you do to close off this end is you fold it over on itself and they sell these little loop things for like a penny a piece and you just kind of squeeze that on the end and put it on there really good so it doesn't come off just like that and you're set now it's time to stake it down okay so I'm actually not gonna stake that bed because we still need to plant it so I can just kind of show you what I mean by staking it down here. You have these little landscape stakes, they're about six inches. Uh, they come in like box of a thousand. And we've just got them staked to keep the lines in their rows. So, um, and then what we'll do at the end, see if I can find a good example, because I have noticed that what will happen, what will happen is, you know, I was having trouble with my lines getting all snaky after the water would turn off. And, and what I realize is when you have new lines, they're, they're, they're kind of, they're being filled with water and, and they're, they're in the sun, so, you know, plastic is kind of pliable. They're expanding, and then when the water turns off, they're longer than they were before. And, and this is only for the first, you know, maybe week or so, and then they kind of get stretched out and they don't really do that anymore. So what I was doing is just basically, we just pull the excess and we just pull it tight again and then we basically fold it over on itself like that and then stake it again. And so, you know, 
If it gets loose, we're just gonna pull it through, fold it over, and then restake it. And this seems to help really keep these in line and keep them straight. Okay, question I'm sure I'm gonna be asked is, what, do you, what happens if, if your lines break? And yes, the lines do break. Animals chew them, or they get cut with the greens harvester, or you know, whatever, things happen, right? So it, you don't have to replace the whole line if this happens. All you need is these little repair couplings. And I believe they sell them on Amazon or any irrigation place will have them. And um, the way these work is they just kind of, just like the, uh, the valve fittings, they just kind of screw on. So you'll say, say it's cut here, you have a hole here, you're going to cut here and you're going to cut here and you're going to basically just put this in between. Uh, All right, we've added our nutrient solution and filled it up with water. Today, uh, I'm actually doing a feeding for the hemp plants. So I've closed off all the other valves and we're just going to be running it to these 10 beds. Um, so to use the Mazzy injector, all you're going to do is there's this, I'm standing in the sun, this little red thing over here. You're going to push this so that it's over that way. And then you've got your valve and you're going to want to close it. So one side, you're just going to want to close it until, watching this thing over here, close it until the pressure catches, boom. Okay, now you'll see how this starts to turn dark as it takes up the solution. And I'm going to probably lower it a bit. I don't want it running at, at 20. I usually like to keep it between 10 and 20, maybe like around 15. Um, so, you know, this, this is, if it's up here, it's going to, it's going to, um, go through the solution faster. If you lower it, it's going to be more of a slow feed. So I like to kind of put it at a lower, you know, more like down here, uh, just because that allows, you know, just make sure that all the drip lines are getting it. Obviously the bottom half is going to fill up first. So we don't want to put all my nutrient solution down there. I want it to disperse evenly. All right, there you go. You can see it's coming out here. You just see these little drips and it does a pretty good job of, of covering. Now you can see here, obviously that's why I have the third line on our lettuce rows, because this doesn't normally get too much. It stays fairly dry here. Um, but you know, if you just see, you gotta remember too, it, it's kind of like an hourglass. It's gonna really spread out underground and your coverage is going to depend on really how much organic matter you have, you know, how, how clay is your soil, how sandy, if your, if your soil is really sandy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of just go straight through. So, you know, set your drip lines accordingly. Other than that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I hope if you have any questions, leave them in the show notes. This is something that I kind of had to more or less figure out on my own. I couldn't really find any good videos out there on it. And so I hope this helps and feel free to leave any questions. I'm going to put things in the show notes. Um, regarding you know the irrigation company we used I'm also going to put something in there you know uh, an important thing I didn't mention was you know figuring out how many drip lines you can run on a single timer and that's going to depend on your water source that's going to depend on your gallons per minute and your PSI so we're coming from a well and I know what kind of pump we have on there and accounting for kind of like pressure loss and um, and all that sort of things uh, there's a calculation you can do that can show you how many lines to run. If you run too many lines, uh, water's not going to be able to get to them all. So um, you have some flexibility there, but uh, that will let you know how many lines you can run per bed or per your plot, or if you need to, you know, split it and put it on different timers. But I'll, I'll do my best to put sort of a, a link in the show notes to help you figure that out. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys like this video and you'd like to see more like it, leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.